about taking before you make it. Um, I'm a senior product manager at Zalando at the moment, and at Zalando since several years. When I started there, it was pretty much a small startup, and actually my role was not product manager, but I actually did build products back then, helping to set up the pricing systems Zalando was using. And then about three years ago, um, something happened to me, and I want to ask you if you know this exciting. You're excited because you want to do something, but on the other hand, you're also scared because you never did it before, and it's huge, and you don't really know how to tackle this. So this happened to me three years ago, when then um, my boss came to me and told me, hey, you did some good stuff here with the pricing systems, and it seems like you like to build products and have a hand for it. And then he told me, we want to basically rebuild our internal retail operation system, which is basically something like SAP or Oracle, like a huge system to steer all the, the, the buying, for example, of the goods we later sell in the shop. And I immediately said yes, because it's a huge opportunity. And then only the next day when I told my girlfriend, OK, I have this nice opportunity, I realized how big this actually is. Because then I start Googling, OK, what is a retail operation system? Realized, OK. We have about several thousand suppliers. We have to transfer like a volume of several billion euros over the system. We have uh, thousands of brands, and also we have hundreds of internal users. And there is a, a complex internal system also in place, which we have to replace, but it's running. So we better don't break things. And we started um, with this project, and it remembered me a bit of my private life because I like to do uh, mountaineering expeditions in my uh, summer vacations. And it was more or less the last three years like a, a big expedition. So, one of the first. Um, does it work now? Okay. Um, so what we did first is basically we did a lot of user story mapping to really understand the process flows with our users and this really helped us to understand everything. We also did opportunity assessments um, because we could do so much basically because we wanted to rebuild this whole system. And mm. okay. I think you have <laughs> Boris. Um, So, the first question we had, which opportunity should we start with? We had basically 50, 60, 70 of them. And we had the main question we had is, um, in which one do we actually have enough confidence? Because it's not just about the business value, but also where you actually believe you can do it in the beginning. Then also, how will success look like in the end? And where do we have the biggest risks? So those were our main questions. And you really only know it when you build the product, but um, you can also fake some things in a lean way to actually answer those questions before. And we have basically used three methods to do this. For example, um, when we started uh, this whole huge product, the design sprint book came out. And a week later, we just decided, let's give it a try to see if we can actually get some decisions out of it. And it helped us a lot because the designer is actually part of the design sprint, and he can see a product in the end of the week. So he gets actually the confidence or see that an idea fails. Um, it also helped to create the shared vision because you validate your most risky assumptions. And the problem we had a bit, we felt it was a bit awkward because it's basically designed for startups. Um, we are not a startup, we know a lot of our processes already because like buying an article from a supplier is an age-old process. We just want to optimize it. But I will come to that later. Uh, the next thing we do, we also, like other big retailers doing this, is basically writing a press release of how you imagine that the product will be in the future. This helps you to actually imagine how success will look like, and it's like a guiding light during the whole um, development. And this was great to convey the vision in a concise way to all the team members, also the delivery team. 
And then the last thing I'm really a big fan of is the pre-mortem. So we don't like to do a post-mortem afterwards, so we simulate actually that we fail. We bring everybody in a big workshop, the product owner, the delivery team, the stakeholders, and then we fake actually that it was a complete disaster and want to get people into the mood that they start actually blaming other people also to really speak openly what could go wrong. Mm -hmm. And then we cluster those, um, those risks um, according to the biggest impact but also the probability. And for all the items which have a high probability at that point in time and which are um, potentially deadly to the project, we uh, create a risk mitigation plan. And the important thing here is that you don't just do the workshop and then stop and you know all your risks, but actually follow up each month, um, have an owner for it, and then actually thinking, okay, the risk increase, or do we have a plan which, um, which stops this from happening? Then the, the next uh, challenge where we could also um, adopt some lean principles was we wanted to optimize the communication system because in the retail industry, a lot is happening over email. So here you see some Excel files which get sent back and forth and it creates a lot of effort for both um, Zalando on one hand but also for all the, the brands like Adidas, Nike and so on. And we thought we can optimize this and digitize it. But the question was will our partners adopt the new ways of communication and also which notifications are important for our internal users. And uh, one thing you could of course do is actually build this kind of notification system but even if you do it in a really simple way, I guess the delivery team would at least have to spend one or two sprints. So it's still a, a big investment and maybe it does not work. What we did in this case, um, I would basically, with, uh, with my team, play the notification system. So I got some data from the back end, looked at the numbers, and then was creating an email address like notification system, blah, 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 and then would send out emails to the users then we would a week later check in the reports if they changed their behavior based on how we expect them to behave and this was a great learning. So without any uh, code written basically we had this learning. On the other hand we also tested this approach with our suppliers. There we didn't send out fake emails and mimic the system but we created like a basically like a sophisticated Google form which looked like a perfect uh, front end. And then we enriched it with real data. We would send out to our suppliers in a, in a completely normal process. And then they just didn't know. And then we observed how they reacted. And this was quite successful because they basically reacted in about one hour. And this was proof for us that actually what we imagine, how we do the communication in the future will work. And then we started with this project. So this sounds, um, sounds quite nice, but we launched a lot of um, sub-products of this huge product and of course some also some projects failed or got stuck because the adoption was not so high but overall it was quite successful but the hardest part um, we had still before us and we had some some issues here um, so the core component is, ba is basically built around several smaller products and we want to touch this core component where all the other services are uh, linked to, which is basically like operating on an open heart. And we had like a dozen really of uh, critical questions we had to answer from our engineers, but also from stakeholders. We had five engineering teams that needed to be aligned, that actually the, the um, flow for the end user is seamless. And we had the task um, to actually build, make some really um, hard architecture decisions. Um, which are costly to revert, so it's not easy to try out things there. Um, what we did here then, based on our experience with the, can you skip the next with the design sprints, is we adapted this format a little bit. And we basically focused more on the part of the design immediately and not so much on the um, idea generation phase because we knew the process. So basically at day two we started to start with prototyping and normally um, when you think about big companies like uh, Zalando now, you think you can maybe not apply those lean principles but I think it's even better for example because in our case we can 
can just go to our users and don't have to recruit them. So what we did here was we would basically design something, discuss this with the engineering team, and then I would just run the floor below and present some designs to the users or directly show them the next version of the prototype, then run up again and we do the next iteration. So basically, four days we did nothing, then iterating hour after hour after hour, and then on the last day testing. And this helped us in the end um, to really make those decisions and give the engineering teams also something they can use to, to evaluate certain scenarios also in terms of performance and what is uh, expected from them. So it helped us to replace many hy also hypothetical, hypothetical questions by user validated facts. So this worked quite well. We started now with the implementation. So at the moment I am uh, I'm only excited. <laughs> but um, as I said, I think especially also when you work for a big corporation where you think things go really slow and it's hard to implement lean, especially there you have a huge opportunity with those techniques to, to use them to, to learn and to actually show also then um, stakeholders or um, what, what we, we want to do and that it can be successful to convince people. Thanks. <laughs>